Well, I'm back to reviewing magazines again. And what we've got here is Sci-Fi Excellence. Spring of 2001 from Future Publishing. Yep. This is like 23 years old, folks. There's people who will probably be watching this who hadn't even been born in 2001. And I've got a magazine from that era. So what we've got here is the top 20 good-looking science fiction stars, both male and female. Um, so yeah, can't really say exactly what's been set, uh, what's been uh, obviously advertised. Uh, so yeah, so let's just get straight into it. Ah, Farscape. I never got into Farscape. My type of sci-fi is like my opinion you've got sci-fi you've got spaceship sci-fi and then you've got like the uh other bits like x files don't get me wrong i like dark skies i never got into x files but my preference has always been spaceship sci-fi hence the reason why i like star trek so much and firefly but uh farscape i never got into it which i do regret because i think the acting and obviously the animatronics of the puppets etc was impressive for the time including buffy the vampire split slayer uh loved buffy uh when i was younger and this was in spring and it was three pound fifty issue number 76 mm, numbers this is old, 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 old magazine. Galaxy Quest, never seen, although I have heard it's rather hilarious. And obviously you've got the highlights, etc. The thing is with this type of era of sci-fi, it wasn't basically based upon the comic book era of superhumans, which I've never been a fan on, personally speaking. This is like, Good sci-fi. Magic the Gathering. Never got into it. I did get into yu gi oh for a while. Although, it's like everything else. Work gets in the way of everything when you get older, unfortunately. SFX the Classics. Back to the Future. That's the power of love. This magazine and the articles were extremely well published. Well written and well designed. It used to basically have reviews of old uh, TV shows and old movies, etc. Although, like I said, if you haven't watched Back to the Future by now, there's something obviously seriously wrong with your life. Obviously, I'm not going to read the full article, but this has been in my uh, storage compartment for such a long time. And if you're wondering what the original Marty McFly was going to look like, that was him. Eric Stoltz during the trial tenure of Back to the Future. You can't really understand why anybody would want, wouldn't want to uh, change Back to the Future. So, this is how old this, this is. This is a, a game, PlayStation 2. Yeah, the advertising PS2 games, so quite old what you start off with is the letter section so with future publishing they used to move the format around quite a bit and in the gaming magazines they used to be at the back of the uh, magazine and obviously with sfx it was at the front funny enough um Going off topic a little bit, there was a guy called Marcus Hawkins, who was the editor of Games Master magazine for a while. I actually googled him to see what we, what he was up to these days, and he's now the practical photography editor or one of the journalists for that magazine. So yeah. Free Star Trek Voyager 7's collector's box when you buy Voyager 7.1 on video. No DVDs here, folks. Although the artwork on that does look quite nice. 
it's a shame that season six and seven was a bit pants to be honest of star trek voyager as you can tell i know a lot about star trek because that's what i was uh, into when i was younger and it was from woolworths well worth it and woolworths has been gone years ago but yeah advertising vhs not dvd yes folks this is going to be borderline history in the next couple of years not that i'd ever flog this magazine absolutely not uh double blow radio 4 rejects doctor who so i think that was some sort of uh, radio program that they was going to do leading on to the mummy returns so basically what you had is various uh, articles on new or updated or tv shows and movies i actually was quite a fan of the mummy uh, series i enjoyed number one and two i can't really remember number three but number one and number two was good the scorpion king in my opinion was was quite an impressive uh, film i mean it's not to everybody's taste but that's just how it is uh x files i never got into x files i just for me, when I was younger, I sort of started watching it, but I was just too scared of it. It was just too much. Uh, 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 it's just too much. Too dark for my liking. Ah, yes. <sighs> Monkey Business. Planet of the Apes. The remake. Not the newer ones, which I may have not watched. Get on to the Star Trek, which we uh, are fully aware of. This was basically Star Trek X which was uh, Star Trek Nemesis, so you was about two years away from it uh, being released, obviously 2001-2003. That article is just saying about uh, expect a brand new look of the Romulans. In my opinion, Star Trek Nemesis could have been done a lot better. It would have been nice to have sort of tied in the um, Star Trek Voyager uh, with it, but that's just my opinion of it. Ah, Steven, uh, Steel, uh, uh, Steven Spielberg received a knighthood. That's cool. Didn't know that. The Buffy Roundup. This is when Buffy was good. So you probably had maybe seasons one and two of Buffy that was not that good. And then obviously the rest of it was like three, four, five, etc. That was all good. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Um, Buffy Roundup. Um, obviously now it's all been gone, done and dusted. Uh, watch this Spaced. Never got into Spaced. The reason being is that my life is so, so tied up with work. I can only review magazines. Uh, Xena Series 3 Box 1. VHS, folks. If you wonder what VHS is, you basically had this like big piece of plastic that had film in it that went round. And you stuck it into this uh, machine that played it on a TV. I personally um was a vhs lad um obviously showing me age here and uh, eventually it went all to dvd and i do apologize if i sound like i've got a cold because i have next month david baranis i think i've miss said that wrong um the future of trek series v movie x so basically the set trek series v was obviously star trek enterprise movie x was star trek uh, nemesis i always say as you get older things aren't like the way they were uh, people places uh, magazines everything is just so it's no tactile um, type uh, media anymore i mean magazines are a very very old way of getting your point through Ah, Farscape on VHS. I'm going to start watching Farscape. I've decided this year I'm going to watch it. <laughs> you know, um, basically, this uh, SFX um, magazine had a really impressive um, website, which actually went down quite quickly. I think it's probably because nobody was actually going on it, although it could have been going on it, but not creating any income. And this was before social media. So, yeah. Oh, well, boys. Um, Star Trek uh, SFX competitions. No, thank you. I don't think we could enter them now and get away with it. Lone Gunman, the original to uh, uh, Terminator. Uh, 
<laughs> Wolfie events, Voyager, the return, the 27th to the 29th of July, 2001. And obviously you've got uh, Janeway, Paris, Tuvok and Neelix all in their uniforms. None of them would look exactly the same in real person. I've never been to a Trek convection. I did go to a uh, like a Comic Con type one in uh, Manchester one time. It was so okay. I mean, it wasn't really my cup of tea. I don't particularly like clouds. Uh, credit card outline. I wonder if you could, we could uh, read uh, uh, ring this number and see if anybody would answer. That would be kind of cool. Uh, SFX opinion. Um, I would like I said. This is mostly talking about Terry Pratchner, maybe an astonishing mega success in Britain, but he's merely an OK seller in the US of A. Ah, Space Precinct. I actually like Space Precinct. The reason being is that it was sort of future, but it was also sci-fi spaceships as well. Well, of sorts. Although, personally speaking, I don't watch much TV now. So once again, I'd have to get back to you on that one. The spoiler zone. Oh dear. I wonder if there's anything in here that we've not already watched. Well, Star Trek Rise, no. Everything else, possibly. Obviously, you had the X Files. Basically, when this magazine came together, you kind of had to like tear this bit off. I don't know if you can see it, but it's like got a perforated section. So yeah, so basically you just like kind of like rip this bit off, like opening up the folder for the nuclear ICMB codes, which the world leaders, let's hopefully, will never use. Angel. Um, never got into Angel, although I did, did hear that it was actually a rather interesting series to watch. Uh, I got into Buffy, obviously Angel. It wasn't mainly because at the time here in the UK, we, I didn't have Sky. So Angel came on Channel 4 at some ridiculous time. It was like half past uh, two in the morning on a weird Tuesday night. Who's up at that hour at night? Well, there's probably plenty of people who's uh, watching this saying, yes, I was up at that hour at night. Ah, charmed. I actually like Charmed and I watched it for a while. So I watched it from about 19, 2001 up to about 2004. And then I started going out clubbing. So, yeah, um, I did watch the last few episodes. But uh, unfortunately, I do miss Charmed. I do think it had a very good uh, setup and well written. Although, unfortunately... When you're young, you tend to go out clubbing when you're young. So you don't have no reference when you start reviewing magazines from 23 years ago. However, we're on to Voyager. Uh, season, is it six? It was definitely six. Inside Man, mm, it was okay. Body and Soul, Nightingale. I, <laughs> season six and season seven was okay in Trek. Um, series where something like TNG actually got better after like season three, Voyager got better after season. I'd say seasons one to about five was good, season six to seven was rubbish. I mean, if it ended with the Equinox arc, it I mean, that's where it should have ended. Ah, Roswell High. I've still got the uh, theme tune in my head, which I'm not going to sing because I'm foot flued up at the moment. Uh, 13 issues, only £7.49. That's actually quite decent and cheap. This is what happens when inflation comes into effect. Uh, ask the SFX experts. Oh, actually, I might write into these guys one day. The reason being is that... Um, there was a TV show in the late 90s. So basically, it was on Channel 1, BBC 1, and it was two parts to it. So you had the one part where it's like modern day, and the other part was like back in during the Blitz during World War II. And this uh, USA fighter pilot sort of loses his ship by crashing into this uh, UFO. I remember the end bit where this like huge, like, object basically swallowed up the uk and the only way the uh people of the world could actually protect themselves is actually tactically nuke the uk and just 
uh, remove the uh, the presence of uh, of the power source for this uh, alien craft. Anybody's watching this who can actually tell me what that is, I would be greatly appreciated. The two thousand readers awards. Right, this is the fun bit. Look, creasing in the corners. Uh, best sci-fi fantasy movie, 2000, X-Men. Um, I like the X-Men. Uh, I like X-Men's 1 and 2. Not a big fan of 3. Days of Future Past, which is obviously a few years later. Yeah, good. Uh, worst one, Battlefield Earth. Never watched it. Um, don't think I ever will. Um, not a big John Travolta fan, although he was good in Pulp Fiction. Uh, best uh, sci-fi uh, uh, actor, which you can't really say actor or actresses anymore. <laughs> so yeah, Hugh Jackman and Anna Paquin. Uh, let's see what we else we've got. Oh, TV. Best uh, TV show, uh, Buffy. The best uh, individual uh, episodes of uh, that was Hush. Was uh, basically a Hush. If you're not a Buffy star, uh, Buffy fan, is where they don't say anything for the majority of it, and uh, yeah, it ends with uh, obviously Buffy just screaming. Uh, yeah, it's really creepy, like sort of thing you'd watch on Halloween, but you know, good. Uh, most uh, improved sci-fi, yes, uh, Farscape, I believe, with that. Uh, best SF <laughs> fantasy, James Marston's. Actually, there was a bit of a controversy one time because he did an interview and he said uh, the word ass instead of arse. And all British people was like, look, mate, if you pretend to be a British guy, make sure you say arse, not ass. Um, so, yeah, uh, Alison Hangin, uh, Buffy star and worst sci-fi show, TV show runner Andromeda. Actually, Andromeda was the opposite of um, Voyager. So Andromeda started off really rubbish and then went better, whereas Voyager started off good, the good premise, and then it went crap. So, yeah, my babble and babble and babble. Uh, got to admit, I don't really read many sci-fi books, although I have heard that Terry Pratchett is actually quite a good uh, author to read. Although I should be reading more because it's better for the uh, old grey matter. Others continued. Uh, best sci-fi computer game. Spider-Man. <laughs> I, bet I bet it can play on an iPhone these days. Uh, best sci-fi feature couch potato. Now, couch potato is actually quite an interesting concept. So what they did is they got a group of people and they put on like really B-movie type uh, um episodes of various tv shows and movies etc and one of the uh guys he goes uh, ah the old star trek proverb uh red sky at night this episode is not good it begins with s um yeah uh newcomer giggy eggly uh, which was uh, an actress who played a part in farscape for the life of me i can't remember <laughs> Uh, the biggest whinger, Robert Beltrain. Uh, Robert Beltrain had reason to uh, whine um, because basically the scripts at the, obviously the tail end of Voyager were not that great and I can understand why. Uh, the most embarrassing thing in sci-fi, Channel 4. Yes, exactly my point. Yeah, who puts... A TV show on at like half past two in the morning. Why did they do that? Why didn't they just allow the BBC just to carry it on? It could have been Buffy slash, obviously, um, uh, Angel. Uh, a sexiest man, Patrick Stewart. Okay, he's a balded middle-aged bloke. Uh, everybody's favourite uh, teen uh, fantasy, uh, which was Jerry Ryan. Obviously, my pre uh, preference. Um, yeah. Let's skip some of this stuff, even though there's nothing really uncommon about various actors and actresses. Sexiest Man, number one, science fiction, David Brown, Sarah Michelle Gillica, science fiction, sexiest woman, number one. Yeah, 23 years later, obviously the perception of uh, the actors and actresses were probably slightly different. 
So near not so far scape yet. So basically what they did is that they interviewed the three main stars. Obviously this uh, article takes some reading. Um, but uh, yeah, remember it quite well. Uh, <laughs> Sarah Michelle Jellicoe will have to do a Madonna and wear t-shirts with my name on them. That's actually quite a good quote. I'm actually going to uh, print some t-shirts up with uh, one bunny on it and see how many people going to start randomly... Uh, looking at uh, and uh, and buying my merchandise which is not a bad idea um so baby browder he got interviewed as well obviously with farscape and then obviously it leads to uh gigi awards gigi edgley um she had a quite of a bit of a weird like uh, sense of humor it goes flip off comes off the majesty patch covering my nipples and but she basically said look carry on with this take because i'm not bothered and and the and the film crew was like listen it's got to go through like various senses so yeah oh yeah the zombie couch potato so this is what i was talking about you've just got a group of people get a couple of uh, glasses of wine bit of junk food watch old b-movie type uh, videos this generation had it all there was no social media there was no connectivity it was just people and obviously objects now it's just social media and objects rather than people uh yeah so <laughs> i'm not saying that quote there because i might get banned off uh, youtube forever spaced invaders all i can say is that if you can find out uh, obviously simon pegg the actor who uh, eventually played scotty in the new star trek uh, films which as a lifelong style star trek fan i wasn't really a big fan of they never really got the grasp of it it was mostly like yeah i think they shouldn't have gone back to kirk and all that the history of star trek quite an interesting article this is on us obviously about uh, um, generations the reference I've just killed a child or hero and always remember that moment, Ronald D. Moore, is obviously when reference when he's writing the script for uh, Star Trek Generations. So, yeah. When the 30th anniversary rolled a lot around, it was suggested that we do a homage to the original series. The trouble with Tribbles. Um, possibly one of the better Deep Space Nine um, videos. Uh, sorry, episodes. Um i i did and i didn't like star trek deep space nine i liked it at the time but when it got into just the repetitive one thing of just on about the dominion all the time it was kind of like i like spaceship sci-fi where you go to a planet you investigate something and then obviously you fly off so yeah um i've got that ep i've got that um um issue I think I've got that one as well. I might have even done a review about these, to be honest. Uh, a couple of other episodes. Uh, a couple of other um, issues I've not got. Must apologise for that. I heard something outside. Ah, little Kim. So that was taken in the Caretaker episode. Funny enough, I watched Caretaker the other day. I had some problems not being punched and all, which was to the point where Hotmail at one point in the room, but I'll go and pass them. Uh, Garrett Wang. You know, the, 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 the Voyager was, in my opinion, always superior to Deep Space Nine. So with Deep Space Nine, you had like an overall arc, which eventually led to an intergalactic war. With Voyager, it was an overall arc that eventually led to, obviously, them getting back to Earth. Although I personally would have ended it at Equinox, but that's just me. Uh, Mobile Sid Gundam. I never got into this stuff, so don't ask me anything about it. Although, this, if you know anything about this, please let me know. Um, so, yeah. Just go past that. Sci-fi dictionary <laughs> or later sci-fi films, DVDs, books and more. No games, though. Good. Uh, Hannibal. Um, yes, I did watch Hannibal. It wasn't that good. Um, I liked Anthony Hopkins in The Science of the Lambs. Uh, very good actor. Um, but uh, when it, when Hollywood tends to milk the goat a little bit, it was kind of like, yeah. 
some of this stuff i i don't know that much about um not been a big fan of doctor who if i'm all being honest but back in 2001 it would have been the old old doctor who i like the matt smith era um the david tennant era i wasn't really a big fan of um but yeah i i did enjoy the matt, matt smith era uh obviously x-men on the it'll be dvd won't it hello man um liked hello man um had a good premise to it uh, the Terminator, if you've not watched Terminator, you don't know what Terminator is, just wait until Skynet gets invented and then it will tell you all about it. The Abyss, I found The Abyss one of them weird films where it was like, what is this all about? And it was like scary, but like fascinating at the same time. Scream 3 should have ended with Scream 2. I haven't watched the new Scream films. I don't think I will. Mainly because I am not uh, that bothered about that particular franchise. Again, Hollywood is milking the uh, the franchise again. Which, let's be fair, they have to do something. Uh, volumes 9 and 10 of Stargate. Stargate was actually quite an interesting uh, TV show. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed watching the beginning sort of two series were not that great, but then it got ramped up. And once it got ramped up, it was like, yeah, I, I can watch this mission to Mars. Um, I have watched it. It's OK. Um, an enjoyable flick. The Rocky have a picture show. I've actually got on my account, uh, my one Banny account, uh, the Rocky have a picture show intro. And uh, every time I log into my account and uh, listen to it through my phone, it's like that was one of the first songs that comes up. I don't know why. It just makes me uh, smile. Um, oh, Hercules and Xena. I like actually Hercules and I like Xena, Warrior Princess. Um, again, you know, I haven't watched them for years, but yeah. Um, so you got Highlander. Lovely film, well directed, well produced, obviously, with uh, the late great Sean Connery in it, which unfortunately passed away many years ago. Uh, Virgin Megastores, if you ever watched a film with Jerry Ryan in it, who turns into a vampire, the actress who plays the main part was actually a Virgin Megastore employee in it, apparently. Uh, just books, which we'll pass on. Which, to be fair, these books are actually coming into being classics now. Anybody got a good book recommendation? Sci-fi related. Not Harry Potter. I'm currently reading Harry Potter and I'm enjoying every minute of it. Dead weird compared to the books and the films. I bet some of these are these actually uh, these books have never actually been uh, released into a TV show or a film. <laughs> got this. The original PlayStation 1. Not PlayStation uh, X. That's a PS1. The orig uh, official UK PlayStation magazine used to have like de little demo discs. I've not got mine. I wish I would have kept my collection because I, I would have loved to have played them now. Uh, not into comics. I never got into comics. The reason being, I like uh, Frank Miller's um, Sin City. But like superhuman, like x-men and all that i never got into it i mean it's nothing i mean if you're into it that's fair enough if you're not then okay fair enough well let's see what's being sold that folks is an old nokia and what you used to do is you used to text the number and then you used to come up to the uh, ringtone how things have changed now on my phone and i've got two uh both of them are set to silence i don't want no one calling me up anyway um so yeah uh, this is what uh, we used to do for buying stuff. Um, I actually purchased through one of these mail order ca catalogues uh, Warlord uh, episode of Star Trek Voyager. I'm not going to say why. I'm just going to say that's the one I uh, I ordered. Uh, Battlefield Earth recommended dealer guides. <laughs> you know you don't get anything like this now. It's like everything is just online. Whereas this is more chancy. Uh, SMN uh, Movie Market. I don't think I've done a review about uh, the magazine that I've got. The catalogue is basically has like posters and that sort of um, paraphernalia like prints. But yeah, 
Um, it brings back the memories, this uh, magazine does. Sales of the Uncanny. I'm so glad that the uh, video isn't picking up any names and addresses of this. I don't want people randomly calling up random numbers. Uh, mainly because most of them are actually landlines, which they are. Some of them are mobiles. And then you've got the pen pal sections and then announcements, etc, etc, etc. Oh dear. This is why the internet was uh, invented for us nerds. Well... World Wide Web was invented. The internet is obviously uh, the internet's part. The internet is the World Wide Web incorporated inside of it. That's just me babbling. Right. MVC. Not heard them on years. Star Trek uh, TNG. Best of both worlds. Um, not sure what that episode is. Oh, Unimatch Zero Part Two and Imperfections. Ew. And then obviously you've got uh, the Undiscovered Country. Brilliant. That's just rubbish. And that's amazing. And on that note, thank you very much for watching. See you soon.